Hello everyone, welcome to our Sunday broadcast. Last week, I began a message called The Righteous Revolution. Our nation has had a complete change politically. That happened because believers finally woke up and began to speak up for the direction of our country. A righteous revolution began, but it doesn't stop with an election. Now is not the time for the body of Christ to sit down. The Bible says we're to hunger and thirst after righteousness. We're to search after God's Word in His heart. That's today's broadcast. But before we get into the Word today, here's Jeannie, as always, singing to you and ministering to you in song, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. And 
she cares for you too. Amen. All I could think to say was get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Now, the, over in uh, verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize. Well, you think of win and prize together. Win a prize. Win the prize. What he's actually saying here is, in the word win means to gain. He said, I, I want to win Christ. Christ is the prize. But, but, but wait a minute, what, what do you mean Christ is the prize? Keep reading. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I have so identified with this, and I have so struggled with this at the same time, because I feel like Paul felt. I want, I want to win Christ. I know legal, legal side of redemption, I'm in Christ. The vital side of redemption is the working out. It's the faith part. I think Andrew describes it this way. The grace part is what God has already done for us. The legal side is what God's already done for us. The faith side is our part. The faith side is the vital side. It's the working out. So I know what God's already done for us, but I'm like Paul. I am I'm reaching forth for the prize. I want to win Christ, meaning I want to be so much like him that I lose myself. You know what I'm saying? I, you got to be real careful here because I've, I've thought it and I've heard it said. And, you know, we always religiously, we say, oh, Lord, don't let them see me, but let them see you. We can't help but see in you. <laughs> you know, I've heard, I've heard ministers say, well, it's not about us. It's not about us. And I asked the Lord about that one day. I said, what is, who's it about them? He said, it's about you. <laughs> go, go read Ephesians chapter one. He hath blessed us. He has predestined us. He said, it is about you. What it's not about is self. So I was praying one day in my office. I have a big life-size picture of Jesus on a prayer bench. And I was leaning there praying. And this was just going off in me and just absolutely revelation. And I looked up that picture of Jesus. And all of a sudden, whoosh, I realized and I said out loud through the tears, Lord, in you, I have no identity of my own. I have no identity of my own. Paul said, in him, I live and move and have my being. Now, I'm my sister's brother. I'm my parents' child. I'm my wife's husband, I'm my son's father, and grandkids you know, go all the way down to great grandkids. I know I have identity in this world, but in Christ, I have no identity of my own. You know, identity is a powerful thing. Identity theft is the number one crime. People want to steal your identity. 
Where does our identity come from? It comes from our family, our parents, our grandparents. Everybody shapes our lives. We, we identify with uh, uh, the clothes we wear, the style of hair we have, the, uh, the automobile we drive, the house we live in, the church we go to. Er everything has to do with our identity. But man, I want to identify with Jesus. He saved me. He healed me. He delivered me. He set me free. Jesse and I were doing a meeting together in El Dorado, Arkansas last year, year before last, I've forgotten what. He was sharing his testimony about heaven, close encounters of the God kind, how he went to heaven. He talked to David and Paul and, and Jesus. I love to hear him tell that. And so I, I, I called him later and I said, Jesse, you always tell this story. I love to hear it. You tell about meeting Jesus and talking to him, but you never say what he looked like. I want to know what he looked like. You said you saw him. I said, can you tell me what he looks like? By that I meant, do you have permission to tell me? He said, oh yeah, I can tell you. He said, he's about six feet tall, about your height, tall, slender. He said, the nails in his Hands are not just ten penny nails. He said they're more like railroad spikes. He went on to describe what he saw. And I said, well, what about his face? I want to see his face. I want to know what he looked like. He said, oh, you can't see his face. I said, you can't. He said, no, it's just a bright light. It's a glow. He said, you cannot see his facial distinctions. He said, but I can tell you this. He said, when he turned around and walked away, I walked away. He said, uh, I saw the back of his head and he had brown hair. Are you, are you really wanting to see Jesus, to know him in an intimate way, in a personal way, and fellowship with him? I mean, you're going to meet him. You're going to see him. Jeannie was praying one day and said, Lord, I just love you so much. I want to touch you. And he said, my daughter, when you get to heaven, you can touch me then. She said, but everybody's going to want to be touching you. He said, at the, at the marriage supper of the lamb, I will personally serve you and you can touch me then. I, I don't know whether you understand, and I'm not doing a good job of explaining it, of the understanding revelation of knowing Jesus, knowing him. I want to be like him. I, I want people to see him. I want to live in him. I move and live and have my being. I want to walk and be perfected in the love of God. And a perfect love casts out all fear. There's no, there's no fear in, in love. Love casts out all fear. Fear has torment. And you want to walk in that perfection. I have no identification of my own. Now, we have to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Go to Matthew 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, verse 6. Now, all of this has to do with the righteous revolution. Matthew chapter 5. And verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 6, 33. The night I got saved, the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee, the old Ryman Auditorium. Connie Smith was singing that night. Johnny Cash and June Carter and Connie Smith. And I had been there for the Friday Night Opry. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go to get saved. I went to hear Johnny and June. I didn't know they were going to be preaching. Pastor Jimmy Snow, Evangel Temple Church. And so 
you know, he said, five minutes he preached. He said, if you need a new life, Jesus Christ is the only way. So I went down to the front. I got born again. I'd taken a picture of Connie Smith. She was singing Friday Night Opera. And she came down and prayed with me. And, and I had her sign her picture. It was a Polaroid. And she signed her picture. And she signed Matthew 6.33. I didn't know what Matthew 6.33 said. So I went home and I got a Bible and I read it. Seek ye first. The kingdom of his God, kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven. First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven. Thou, O man of God, flee these things, follow after righteousness godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. We're to follow after righteousness. We're to seek it. We're to hunger for it. We're to thirst for it. Why? Because if the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? You cannot walk in a complete and total revelation of righteousness and who you are in Christ when you still have self on your mind. You have to have complete divestment from the self-centeredness and become Christ-centered. Everything I do should be focused on Jesus. I remember Jeremy, one of the first ministry conference you preached, you said that the Lord had told you to, to preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. Paul, the apostle said, you know, I, I don't come to you with excellency of speech and the wisdom of man, but Jesus Christ and him crucified. We all came by way of the cross. Amen? What can righteousness do? All the revelation and inspiration must be followed with activation. It's one thing to get revelation and get spiritually fat. It's one thing to get inspired, but inspiration wears off. Revelation stays with you. I love both. I love inspiration and revelation. But you have to follow with activation or it just becomes head knowledge and powerless. Now here's what the righteous can do. What shall the righteous do? Number one, James 5, 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And we're not begging and asking God to do something because he's already done all he's going to do. What was it? Brother Copeland, wait, I think you told Jerry. Jerry came to you with financial, said, Brother Copeland, what am I going to do about my finances? And you turned and said, Jerry, God's already done all he's going to do about your finances. <laughs> and Jerry said, oh, Lord, I'm in big trouble then. <laughs> yeah, that's the legal side of redemption, the grace side. God's already done his part. But we can pray fervently. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, produces a great and mighty force. Number two, we can stand before God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice and hope the glory of God. Now, we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have access by faith into this grace. You access the grace by your faith. So we can stand before God because we're righteous. 
No sense of guilt or shame. Because it wasn't what you did or didn't do that gave you access to God. It's what Jesus did. I remember hearing a minister say one time that he was praying and he was like a lot of people just, you know, begging God and whatever. And he said, all of a sudden, God gave him a divine revelation and he was in heaven standing at the throne of God. And he said what amazed him the most about this experience is that nobody in heaven was surprised or shocked that he was there. That's awesome. When you realize you're not a stranger to God. He knows you. He loves you. He expects you to do these things. Number three, what can the righteous do? Pray fervently, stand before God. And here's, here's the, the last thing. Stand in the gap for the land. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel 22, 30. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. It's not God's MO. It's not his DNA to destroy. He is not the destroyer. Satan is the destroyer. He steals, kills, and destroys. But God sought for a man that would stand in the head, make up a hedge and stand in the gap before me. So when you stand in the gap for the land, you're the righteous. You have the right. You have the assignment. You have the responsibility. Now 2 Chronicles 7, 14, I'll close with that. Everybody knows that you can quote it. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Now that word wicked means twisted or perverted. It's where we get, I remember hearing Dennis preach on this, where we get wicker furniture, twisted. I don't believe he was talking so much about sin as he was people of God not thinking properly, not thinking right. Your, your ways are twisted. You're, you know, God said in Isaiah, he said, come on up here. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He didn't say you couldn't attain them. He just said you, you can't figure them out naturally. They are spiritually discerned in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's not that you can't know God's ways, because if you can't know God's ways, we might as well all go home. We're here to learn God's ways and God's wisdom and God's thoughts and God's ways. I trust the Holy Spirit ministered to you, stirred you up. You may be watching and you may be thinking, you know, I don't have a clue as to what you're talking about. You may not even be saved. You may not even know that Jesus has made you righteous. Well, you want to take advantage of that salvation? You have to pray. You have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised Him from the dead. And the Bible says you'll be saved. If you've never done that, you're not watching today by accident. Would you just stop what you're doing? Close your eyes and pray this prayer out loud with me. That's right. Just say it after me. Just say, Jesus, I believe you're God's son. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. Take away my sin nature and give me your righteous nature. Amen. You know, it really has nothing to do with what you've done. 
It has everything to do with what you just did. If you prayed that prayer with me today, I'd like you to have this book. It's on the screen now. It's called God Loves You. The book will help you get started in your life. It's easy to get. Just log on to vtntv.com. You can download it for free if you like, or you can call 1-800-264-2525 and tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell. And I'd like for you to have this book. We're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, just email it to me, happycaldwell, vtntv.com. You can also call the 1-800 number, 264-2525, and send us your prayer request. Now, again, I want to emphasize we cannot stop this momentum of the righteous revolution. So to help you in your understanding, I'm offering you this product, this teaching series called Righteousness. Watch this. Righteousness, the ability to stand before God without guilt or shame. Did you know you are righteous? When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you were given the gift of righteousness. It's not something God requires you to earn. You can't lose it. You are made righteous through Jesus. Happy Caldwell teaches in depth on this very subject in his six CD series, Righteousness. For just $30, you can learn the depth of God's love, grace, and righteousness for you. Call 1-800-264-2525 to order your set today or log on to vtntv.com. Again, I encourage you to get your copy of Righteousness. It'll help you keep your momentum and help you better understand what it means to be made righteous through the blood of Christ. Join me on Twitter. Follow me at happy underscore Caldwell. Be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN. P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, log on to vtntv.com and click Watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.